If we want full revenge for the past the best way to get it is to remain as we are. As we are, Ireland is a menace to England. We need not debate this, she herself admits it by her continued efforts to pacify us in her own stupid way. Would she not ignore us if it were quite safe so to do? On the other hand, if we succeed in our efforts to separate from her, the benefit to England will be second only to our own. This might strike us strangely, but it is true, not the less true because the English people could hardly understand or appreciate it now. The military defence of Ireland is almost farcical. A free Ireland could make it a reality, could make it strong against invasion. This would secure England from attack on our side. No one is, I take it, so foolish as to suppose, being free, we would enter quarrels not our own. We should remain neutral. Our common sense would so dictate, our sense of right would so demand. The freedom of a nation carries with it the responsibility that it be no menace to the freedom of another nation. The freedom of all makes for the security of all. If there are tyrannies on earth one nation cannot set things right, but it is still bound so to order its own affairs as to be consistent with universal freedom and friendship. And, again, strange as it may seem, separation from England will alone make for final friendship with England. For no one is so foolish as to wish to be forever at war with England. It is unthinkable. Now the most beautiful motive for freedom is vindicated. Our liberty stands to benefit the enemy instead of injuring him. If we want to injure him, we should remain as we are, a menace to him. The opportunity will come, but it would hardly make us happy. This but makes clear a need of the human race. Freedom rightly considered is not a mere setting up of a number of independent units. It makes for harmony among nations and good fellowship on earth. Principles of Freedom Chapter 1 B.Y. Turns Max Winnie. Late Lord Mayor of Cork. The lengthy quote preceding this was by Turns Max Winnie. There are a number of figures in history whom people attempt to sum up with brief quotes or a phrase attributed to them. In Max Winnie's case the most normally heard line you will hear is. It is not those who can inflict the most, but those who can suffer the most who will conquer. A possible alternative you might hear would be. I am confident that my death will do more to smash the British Empire than my release. Whilst both give an impression of the man as stubborn and unbending to the last in defence of his principles this is I would say a true impression. However, the quote from Principles of Freedom should indicate that he was not a simplistic thinker nor did he hate the British, or English as he put it, simply for their existence. Max Winey is normally remembered primarily for the hunger strike that led to his death but this presentation wishes to stress that he also influenced a number of other struggles for independence by both his life and death. In some respects, Max Winey was more of a rebel than a revolutionary. As were many of those involved in the Irish War of Independence. Max Winey had a burning passion to see an independent Ireland and did not consider using physical force to do so to present an insurmountable moral problem. However, his political outlook in many other areas might be best described as moderately conservative. He was a devout Catholic and this informed much of his outlook regarding society. Although it would be fair to say he was not a Jansenist or ultra-clerical Catholic as his writing shows. He continually stresses the need for a dialogue between all the religious traditions in Ireland. Before he became famous throughout the world due to both his hunger strike and taking over the role of Lord Mayor from Thomas McCurtain who was murdered by the Royal Irish Constabulary he was both a rebel and an accountant's clerk. A number of individuals involved in the War of Independence combined mundane jobs with helping to lead an armed rebellion. Max Winey was married to Muriel Murphy who was an heiress of some note and later in some respects far more radical politically than her husband. Her story is complex and lengthy and deserves its own video. Max Winey was active in the Easter Rising of 1916 but his role which was originally meant to be far more important became confused due to the numerous issues with communication which caused logistical issues with the rebellion. 
After being imprisoned at internment camps in England Max Wine was returned to Ireland in 1917 where he was briefly arrested again soon after for wearing the uniform of the Irish volunteers which had been banned. Soon after being released for this he stood as a TD. It was in his role as Lord Mayor of Cork City that Max Wine exemplified one of the themes of revolutionaries in numerous independent struggles. That of using the political apparatus instituted by a foreign ruler or colonial power to disrupt foreign rule. Max Wine took over the role after the previous Lord Mayor Thomas McCurtain was shot on his 36th birthday by a group of men with blackened faces. The general view is that his killers were members of the police and the coroner recorded a verdict of murder. In any case, Max Wine would now briefly become Lord Mayor. He was arrested after around five months in this role for the possession of what was deemed seditious material and imprisoned in Brixton Prison in London. It was from this point on that his story would grab the attention of the media across the globe. After arriving at Brixton Prison Max Wine went on hunger strike, inspired by the earlier strike of Thomas Ashe. Curiously Max Wine is now perhaps better known than Ash's use of the hunger strike was one of the earlier examples of it being employed by Irish Republicans. It became a way to resist that was utilised thereafter by generations of Irish Republicans. Most famously perhaps it was used by Bobby Sands and his comrades. However, given the complex evolution of the Irish state over the course of the 20th century it would be used against the Irish government as well as the British. After 74 days on hunger strike the Lord Mayor of Cork died in Brixton Prison. During that time his situation had caused political debate and arguments around the world. The French media characterised him as dying as martyr as can be seen in one of the accompanying pictures to this presentation. The Australian politician Hugh Mahon was suspended due to protesting about the matter. His death however left the Irish with another problem. Bishop Amigo had noted that his death would unleash a wave of bitterness. Whilst Bishop Amigo was broadly sympathetic to Irish nationalists not all members of the Catholic clergy were and the eventual decision to allow Swiney to have a requiem mass in Southwark Cathedral would see heated debate and arguments between the English and Irish Catholic clergy. These arguments also were carried on between members of the Irish clergy, some who were supportive of independence movements and some who loathed them. Intriguingly Bishop Cohalan who was famous for condemning earlier Irish Republicans wrote a tribute to Max Winey. He had perhaps realised the tide had turned in favour of the rebels in Ireland and sought to ensure his place in what was likely to be a new political reality very soon. In any event, Max Winey famously ended up with a sometimes dubbed as three funerals. The mass in Southwark Cathedral attracted large crowds reported as 30,000 strong. The British guffed attempted to return his body to Cork before mourners could be present, thereby breaking an agreement they had made with his widow. However, ultimately his funeral went ahead in Cork with a massive crowd turning out amidst a city draped in black cloth everywhere. For months later much of the city would be burnt down by British troops as the fighting in the War of Independence intensified. There was also a procession with an empty coffin in Dublin which saw large crowds gather. McSwiney's death would go on to inspire numerous revolutionary leaders, particularly in India. Gandhi was reportedly deeply impressed by his sacrifice and later on in Indian history Bhagat Singh quoted him at his trial. Ho Kai Min noted that, a nation that has such citizens will never surrender. The devoutly Catholic and in many ways moderately conservative Irishman had become by his death an icon of revolution. It was perhaps the unswervingly steadfast nature of his hunger strike to the death that appealed to others engaged in independent struggles elsewhere. His widow Muriel Murphy who as noted earlier is deserving of her own video drifted into numerous left-wing causes and was politically active until the late 1970s. Her story will reflect the contrasting forces that came to dominate the Irish state post-independence and is also sadly a story of family tragedy. Ultimately however Max Winey's death did do more to dismantle the British Empire than any blow he could have struck in life.